once or twice. And, and that's no joke. It actually does happen. But outside of that, um, there is uh, little to no rain. As a matter of fact, we don't get rain uh, in the forecast. You don't hear the weatherman come and say, okay, today's going to be cloudy with rain showers all day. I haven't heard that in months. So you have to wonder uh, if these experiments, and I, I, I'm not even wondering, I know that these experiments and this weather manipulation is playing an active role in the wacky weather that we're having, uh, not only in this country, but all over the world. I mean, uh, Russia has experienced a horrible dry spell. Now they're grappling with uh, fires that uh, have the potential of, of, of releasing radiation that's been stored up in this plant life uh, since the Chernobyl disaster. And uh, I find that to be no, um, that's no coincidence. I mean, you get a lot of dry weather and there's the, always the, the problem and the risk that you run for wildfires. If you take a look at the NASA, uh, NASA tracks all the wildfires throughout the world. Take a look at that and look at their map. I mean, the wildfires are all over the place this year. It looks like half the continent of Africa is on fire. And it just, it, it makes it, it makes me wonder, what in the heck are they thinking? Because they have to know that they're causing these problems elsewhere. And am I right in saying that if you make it rain somewhere, you're going to make it dry somewhere else? That's correct. And, um... It was it. Um, I can tell you um, on my website, which is California um, Skywatch dot com, and also the Agricultural Defense Coalition dot org, which is, has my documents. I have a whole section on weather modification, and one of the things that um, a Bush uh, appointee actually um, by the name of Marburger came out. And when Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison introduced her bill, her weather mitigation modification bill, which we've been fighting against that passage for years, um, Kay Bailey Hutchinson wanted to have the government $10 million a year to start with for the government to have an agency which would mitigate and modify the weather um, across the entire United States. And this bill could be passed. Um, by the U.S. Senate any time because it even got out of committee this year and is just waiting for uh, someone to bring it onto the floor of the Senate like Harry Reid so that they can try and pass it. The bill is very short. It's only about four or five pages long. But when she first introduced this bill, and luckily we've been able to um, stop this bill every year since about 2005, um, what happened was is that President Bush's science advisor um, advised her to kind of withdraw the bill because in 2005 because he said that, and I have the letter online if anyone wants to read it, but they were concerned, and I'll quote you part of it. It's short. It says, because small-scale weather modification may promote rain in one area to the detriment of another, Weather modification can result in interstate litigation or private citizen litigation against the modification programs. The legal and liability issues pertaining to weather modification and the potential adverse consequences on life, property, and water resource availability resulting from weather modification activities must be considered fully before the U.S. government could take responsibility for this new research program. And he goes on to talk about international foreign policy implications, national security implications. Um, in other words, and saying that large and small-scale weather modification efforts could benefit the United States to the detriment of other countries, such as Canada and Mexico. And given global weather patterns, whether one country owns its weather so as to assert intra-border control with extra-border consequences must be considered under president international conventions like the Exmod, um, I'm sorry, like the Enmod Treaty, and it said it could be. In other words, they're talking about it could harm present U.S. positions on foreign policy matters as well. And so they looked at this, and he said that they recommended that she withdraw it, which she's never done. She just keeps uh, putting it up for um, a vote, and it finally made it out of committee this year. So um, there is consequences to weather modification. There's consequences 
to the jets modifying our weather with these man-made cloud cover. And see, what most people don't know is that when you have man-made cloud cover at night, in an agriculture sense, and I speak from this with my background in agriculture, one of the things we know is that if fruit trees don't get enough fruit set hours, that means temperatures below 32 degrees that last for so many days, not necessarily in a row, but that last for so many days, and there's, they have to have so many hours that are below 32 degrees, you aren't going to produce apples and many other crops that depend on having freezing temperatures to set the crop so that you will have good crop production the following year. So the warming of these clouds, which trap the heat instead of having clear skies, really will have an impact on crop production as well. And this is why this weather modification, changing the microclimates that um, uh, ranchers and different people uh, want to deal with, is, is not a good thing to be doing. And that's why I encourage people to, um, in other words, vote, you know, fight against this bill because we don't need to have more mitigation and modification. We need to actually curtail what we're doing because we're changing the climate and it's not good for our watersheds, our trees, different things. And so I would say one thing I might mention is that um, all of the weather, uh, the state of Texas has uh, a weather modification uh, board and all of their meetings are put online and you can listen to them. And the, the ranchers and farmers in the Texas panhandle have been upset for years about the weather modification uh, programs taking away water from their, their uh, ranch lands so that their cattle, the grass doesn't grow and their cattle don't have enough feed. And they're also talking about how it changes the climate. And if it's changing the climate in Texas, it has to be changing the climate as the jet stream travels. Right. That's, <laughs> there's always a, there's a cause and effect relationship with everything. And I guess the question is, is do they understand what the effect really is, or are they just throwing caution into the wind and that's it? You know, well, let's throw this up in the air and see what it does. Yep, it's raining here. I mean, where, where's the observers everywhere else to see if it's going to, you know. It, I, I guess my point is I don't know if they're adequately doing their homework on this or not. If it's a, um, if it's a deliberate um, type of thing to, um, to promote rainfall in one place and, and to, you know, have drought in another. But um, I really see nothing good coming from this. <laughs> do you? I mean, is it? Do you do you see any benefits to this type of uh, weather modification? Not to the large scale that they're doing it on um, in in many states. If you look at Wyoming in 2006, uh, five states got together, and they decided to put more snow in the Wyoming mountains than ever in recorded history for 10 years, and they funded it. So what happened is they did put more snow in the Wyoming mountains. And Colorado, since that time, has been mostly in a drought condition, as well as some areas of Wyoming. But why did they need this extra water? Well, they wanted the, the extra water when it melted, as snow uh, melts, they wanted the water to go down the Colorado River and feed um, the water supplies for Southern California and Nevada. That's what it was for. So the people of Colorado and Wyoming suffered the consequences of these programs in, in many areas because it drew water away from where they would normally get it if the jet stream and the normal precipitation were allowed to happen. So, yes, it can have enormous consequences. Yeah, that's really sad. I, I, I really, the more I think about this and the more I hear about it, the more it burns my blood. And with that said, I, we're going to take a, a quick two-minute break. Uh, folks, get your popcorn, get your sodas, do whichever you got to do. When we come back, we're going to be talking more about weather modification, about the uh, persistent jet contrails, and also um, we're going to get into some GMO foods, and, and uh, we'll be taking your calls. So uh, just sit tight. We'll be back in about two minutes. John, take it away. I noticed something was wrong. It wasn't being reported in the mainstream media. I began a search for answers. That's when I found Freedom Link. Freedom Link radio reports on the real issues of the day not the fluff from mainstream media. 